Howdy, and welcome back to Zemen Outdoors. Today, on part four of my six and a half Creedmoor build, I'm gonna be showing you how I install my buffer and buffer spring in my stock. I'm also gonna show you how I install my barrel, my handguard. I'm gonna show you how I put on the gas block and gas tube. And then I'm gonna install the muzzle device and then install the BCG and charging handle and we should be done. I may end up having to split this into two videos, depending how long this ends up taking, but we'll play it by ear. Before I head to the garage and put this on a vice grip, I am going to install my stock while I'm inside and it's a little bit cooler. I did pony up a little bit on this one. I got the PRS Gen 3 rifle stock. I've heard great things about it. I've never actually used it myself but it's something that I really wanted to test out and use on this gun. So I actually got this on sale from Aero Precision for about 200 bucks, shipped, tax included. So not too bad. I think it's normally like 250 or 275, so it was a pretty good sale. One thing I wanted to show y'all, I mentioned on my last video, I did go ahead and replace the rod here with the Aero Precision rod and you can see it's no longer loose and it goes all the way to the end. And then you probably notice that my pivot and takedown pins are now black. I went ahead and replaced those with the Aero Precision pin kit as well. And you can see on this side here and here. So I'll go ahead and pop those out and take this apart. So you're gonna actually need a 1 8 inch hex Allen wrench here. So the first thing that you need to do is you re remove this screw here, which is the quick detach screw plug and quick detach sling mount. So we'll go ahead and take that out. And then this screw right here, you'll need to loosen by about a half a turn So just a quick note on this too, this is rifle length, so you want to make sure that you are using a rifle length buffer tube here as well, otherwise it will not fit correctly. But now we'll go ahead and slide this on. So it looks like this is actually a little short, I don't know if you can see that. So I think we can use this piece that it came with, which is a little longer. And we will try that. You also don't need an end plate here, which is kind of nice with the rifle length. So we'll slide that on and that fits perfectly. Once you've slid this on, you actually need to uh, lower this butt plate here. And to do that, you twist this knob here and that will help you extend it outward there. So you'll also need to take these two screws out, or at least loosen them, I believe. Let's see. So if you actually just loosen them, you can slide this plate. So you're gonna wanna slide it down just so you get enough clearance right here for this hole. And the screw they gave you will screw into the back and you don't want to lose this screw. I'm not sure if you can tell, but it has a hole right there in the middle, and that is to allow air to escape through the back of the buffer. So you will need to actually extend this out enough so that you can get your screw to fit in here. So like, all right, a little bit more. Yep, so your screw will fit. Not sure how well y'all can see that, but you need the screw to fit right in there. And then you can come in from the back and tighten that down. And that screws into the back of the buffer tube. And like I said, it's got that vented cap back there. 
so that the air can escape through the buffer. So you need to make sure you use that exact screw. Once that is done, you can reattach your quick detach uh, part here. And this is reversible, so you can put the quick detach part on either side. I'm just gonna go put it back on this side. You just need to tighten down until it's about hand tight. And this other screw that you'd loosened up, tighten that back down as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this butt pad back down as well. And I'm not gonna mess too much with the adjustments now. And so this will move your cheek weld up and down there. And this is what moves your butt plate back and forth. All right, now that we have our stock attached, we're gonna go ahead and install the buffer and the buffer spring. This is very simple. You're just going to place it in your buffer tube right here. You may need to push down the buffer detent to be able to get it to fit or slide in easier, I mean. So you'll push so it goes all the way down, you'll hear it click, and that buffer detent right here is going to hold that buffer in. So now we'll go ahead and just put the receiver back together. We now have the stock on it, and that was pretty easy to install. We put the buffer spring and the buffer tube inside as well. And so now we're gonna go ahead and head outside. We're gonna look at installing the barrel, the handguard, the gas block and the muzzle device while we're out in the garage and have this on a vice block. Back in the garage and we're gonna go ahead and install the barrel first. So what you really need for this is you need a vice block. And I've also got this uh, block here. It's a Nomar block. If I can find a link for it, I'll send it to y'all. But it works for AR-15 and 308s. And essentially it'll hold your upper such that you can get it in your vice block and not mess up uh, your finish on your upper receiver. So essentially, here's the block. It's got spots for your pivot and takedown pin to fit in there. So I'm just going to get that in there. So it slides in like that. And then you can slide in your pins. And it also has a little cover here to fit right over the top so that you can basically hold in your upper like that. So we'll go ahead and lock this into your vise. So the barrel I'm using on this build is a Faxon barrel. I don't know how well you can read that. This is a 20 inch heavy fluted 6.5 Creedmoor rifle length barrel. It has 416R stainless with a nitride finish and 5R rifling. So I really wanted to go with the 22 inch, but I was struggling finding a, a good 22 inch. Um, and I really like the Faxon barrels. And so this one popped up online. Um, it's a one and eight twist. And honestly, you can't really go wrong with Faxon. And part of the reason I was okay with the 20 inch is I'm going to be putting a suppressor on it. So I figured that it was not the end of the world. If I didn't get out to the 22 or 24 inch that I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the barrel into the upper receiver here. There you go. So you're also going to need your handguard. In this case, I have the F1 X7M. 15 inch free float handguard. This was about 283 bucks. And by the way, the barrel is about $390. You can get a ballistic advantage barrel. It's actually owned by Aero Precision. And so you know they're good barrels and they're a little bit cheaper if you wanna go that route as well. And then same with the handguard. You can definitely get stuff cheaper than what this is. I just really like this handguard. And again, being the build that I wanna build, I decided to go ahead and buy it. So handguards will come with a barrel nut. Just to give you an idea, this is what this barrel nut looks like. One thing you want to do before you uh, 
put your barrel nut on is get that arrow shell because you really want this to make sure you don't seize it up if you ever want to replace it. Um, so I'm going to throw some arrow shell here on the threads. And again, all this is doing is it's a little anti-seize so that is not a pain in the ass uh, once you want to take it off if you ever want to. We'll take our barrel nut now. We'll just start putting that guy on. And you'll just tighten it down to hand tight. For now, you're going to need a torque wrench and your armor's wrench to get that tight. The specs here say you want it tightened down to 30 to 80 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my torque wrench out of the box. And I just bought this torque wrench on Amazon. So I can put a link for that in the description as well. But I am going to set it to 30 to start. And we will see... Well, it doesn't look like my armor's wrench fits on this guy. Let's see if I have something else here. Just to get an idea of what size this is. Well, unfortunately, this is the stuff you just have to deal with sometimes when buying a handguard that uh, is not something you typically buy and was hard to find a lot of information on. But it looks like I need uh, a bigger wrench that I can be able to fit my torque wrench into. So unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this today. I'm gonna to have to buy, go see if I can go buy another wrench. But I'll follow up once I uh, go buy myself a wrench that I can be able to torque this down with.